so welcome you all. Uh, today our speaker is Nilam Nawal uh, from Mumbai University. She is a junior research uh, fellow uh, and she's a PhD research scholar there. So she, uh, her studies is uh, <clears throat> focusing on experimental physics, cosmology, X-ray astronomy, star formation and stellar astrophysics. Uh, she works a project based on utilization of the AstroSat data. So uh, she will give a talk on uh, flux resolved spectroscopy of dipping ne neutron star low mass X-ray binaries, uh, maybe specifically on X-ray binary 1254-690 uh, with AstroSat. So uh, thank you, Nilam. So you may start sharing your screen. Yes, then it's your turn. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, I first of all would like to thank you, uh, organizers, for having me, uh, like giving me chance to share my work with you all. Uh, it is my pleasure. Uh, so here uh, I would like to uh, uh, discuss about the flux resolved spectroscopy of dipping low mass X-ray binary XB twelve fifty four minus six ninety with astrosat. So uh, before that, I would like to give some a brief idea about uh, the X-ray binaries and the application onto X-ray binaries. Uh, so the as name suggests, a binary. It, there is a two. Uh, there are two. It is a system of a two objects. Uh, one will be the compact object at the center and uh, at, at somewhere here, and there will be a companion star. Uh, so uh, what happens? Uh, and uh, there will be at the a common center of mass revolving around the common center of mass. So uh, what happens is like the uh, the also and in here the compact object can be the black hole, a neutron star, or a, a, a white dwarf star. Uh, so which upgrades the mass from the companion star, but uh, due to the high gravity. But this accretion uh, uh, will be with the due to the high angular momentum the accretion. It, it will form a accretion disk around uh, around the compact object, and uh, it, it will form the accretion disk around the uh, this compact uh, uh, object. And uh, the gravitational energy released uh, from this accretion disk is in the form of uh, X rays, which we uh, detect using the uh, instrument based on satellites or the balloon uh, uh, for the further studies of the sources, and they do emit in the uh, in in uh, optical and the radio, uh, radio energy bands as well. But the prominently they emit in the X rays, so the jets can be seen uh, in a radio emission, but the prominently uh, they emit X rays. So uh, as like uh, the XP twelve fifty four minus six ninety is a is a a uh, neutron star X-ray binary, and it shows the dip, dipping uh, dipping in the light curve. So, what exactly is the dipping uh, X-ray binary? So, the very few of the uh, low mass X-ray binary exhibit dips in the uh, uh, X-ray uh, uh, with the orbital period of uh, period uh, with the orbital period, and uh, it is it is believed that the uh, the dips are uh, due caused due to the absorption uh, absorption of the excess uh, in 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 the bulge of the outer accretion disk. So the structure about the accretion disk uh, at the point of uh, impact of the accretion flow uh, at the new uh, companion star. The source uh, is uh, the, these sources are like uh, very important because uh, to study because. Uh, they can give us information about the system geometry and the physics uh, than the, those of the non-dipping sources, uh, and we will we can better constrain uh, the outer region of the accretion disk. So the dippers sometimes do exhibit uh, exhibit low frequency QPOs uh, called dipper QPOs at the lower energy. So QPOs also are very uh, important to study uh, in such sources because uh, they also give the information about the innermost region of the accretion disk uh, of, of the so such sources. 
so uh, this data which we will be discussing this the result which we will be discussing are observed uh, the data is observed by the astrosat satellite it is india's first multi multi wavelength space observatory uh, which has uh, which has a five uh, telescopes on board so uh, you must have heard before uh, earlier talks uh, about the astrosat so i'll briefly tell like what all the instruments uh, this 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 blocks are of uh, are large excel proportional counter it is a proportional counter uh, uh, for the x rays uh, between uh, it, it it detects between 3 kv to up to 80 kv uh, uh, x rays and then there is a soft x ray telescope here and uh, which is like uh, detects the x rays uh, from like 3k point 3 kv to the uh, 7 8 kv up to 8 kv and then there is a hard x ray telescope here is a cadian zen telegraph imager it's a M imager the sx is also imager so he uh, the cadian zen telegraph imager uh, is a hard x ray which which uh, actually uh, which uh, detects x rays from like 15 kv to up to 200 kv and uh, beyond that also it has uh, uh, detected many uh, gamma ray gamma ray out uh, gamma ray bursts uh so there is there is another instrument here is a scanning sky monitor it is a all sky monitor which uh, sky uh, scans the sky for the uh, for the uh, for the uh, event happening uh, any important event happening in the sky and alerts the uh, alerts the other instruments uh, it is and this this two are the uh, ultraviolet imaging telescopes uh, the uv telescope so that is why we call it as a multi wavelength because it covers from the uv to hard x rays and uh, is a first of its, its kind uh, instrument in the developed by india uh, isro uh, so in this uh, work uh, uh, we, we have used data from this uh, large x ray proportional counter and the sst we did not consider the uvit and the uh, uh, cadmium zinc telluride right? uh imager for the for our uh, study so uh, before moving on i would uh, like to give brief introduction introduction about the source the xp 1254 minus 690 so it is a persistent low mass x ray binary source which was observed first observed by uh, hio 1 a2 instrument uh, uh, with then an optical outburst of 20 seconds approximately 20 seconds duration was occurred uh, the the detection of dates the first detection of dates uh, was observed by exposat uh, exposat with the orbital period of 3.88 hours plus uh, hours the observation of uh, and and the, during the same observation it shows the uh, type one x ray burst uh, which confirmed that the uh, uh, the compact object is a neutron star uh, uh, is a neutron star and uh, the optical counterpart is a 19th magnitude faint uh, blue star uh, called gearmos uh, for this system so when i say dipping uh, so here is the example Uh, so this is exam newton data uh, between uh, 0.6 to 10 kv uh, this they have uh, considered uh, different observation over over the period like from 2002 to like 2007 from 1 to 2007 so they have segregated uh, this five observation uh, based on the dips okay so uh, here if we see these uh, observation 2 and 3 have not shown any uh, any dips uh, in the light curve however there is one nuclear uh, there is a one uh, thermonuclear burst here observed there is a uh, this panel in this panel we can see there is a shallow dip observed there are shallow dips observed and in these two panel panels there is a, a deep dip observed so what exactly between uh, the the dips as i told the dips occur because the x rays are uh, uh, excess from the accretion stream are uh, when striking to the structures about the accretion uh, disk uh, and are like if it yeah. and and get absorbed and it is only possible if the systems are at the high inclination okay so that is why we see the, such dips and it happens at exactly at the orbital period of the system 
so uh, when we say this uh, shallow deep and deep deep the uh, what exactly is the meaning of the uh, uh, shallow and uh, deep deep so they have given a definition where uh, if the persistent emission uh, the uh, if comparing with the persistent emission the deep uh, the, the the flux falls between uh, uh, 5 to 10% then it is called as a shallow dip compared to the persistent emission. And if it is like uh, uh, reducing from like 10 kV to 90 kV, it is called as a uh, deep dip uh, compared to the persistent emission. And if it, if it is less than 5%, uh, then there is no uh, there is no burst observed uh, in the source. So uh, the Mon et al. Uh, has given uh, the ephemery and they calculated this uh, 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 3.88 uh, 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 orbital period. And from then, uh, this, this thick vertical uh, bar are uh, indicating the, the, the uh, time when the dips are expected. So uh, here they have indica indicated in each panel, so we can observe the each panel. There is a uh, coincidence of the uh, time predicted and the dips observed, and here the dips were absent. So the uh, reason for non-detection of the uh, uh, the probable reason for the non-detection of the dips can be uh, the angular size of the disk, uh, disk uh, age decreases to the less than ten percent. Uh, which was which which is supposed to be earlier like 17 to uh, as 10 degrees uh, sorry uh, pardon uh, from the 17 to 25 degrees so that is the reason why we don't see the dips and uh, when it is in an optimal uh, size uh, we can see the see the dips so uh, in this source along with the uh, dips uh, uh, energy inden intensity dips we observed uh, X-ray burst and flares also. So here is here what, there is another example from uh, Smith et al. 2002, where they showed uh, the, with the two observations, this 2001 and uh, uh, May 2001 observation. Here we can see there are dips. This is RXTPC observation. Uh, uh, dips, deep dips are observed, and there are flarings also. Okay, and uh, in this observation. So uh, in this observation, uh, there are flares and there are bursts also observed in this observation. So uh, this is how the source variability, and these are the vertical peaks again indicating the deep position. So there are occasions where dips again absent here, and uh, same here also the dips were absent. From the uh, timing properties, uh, it is established by Bhattacharya uh, 2007 that this is the at all source. So uh, when, when we say at all source, there are two types of uh, classes uh, uh, in the uh, sources, uh, Z sources and the at all sources. So when we say at all sources, they, they trace the, uh, this kind of a band on the color-color uh, diagram or the hardness intensity diagram, which we call it. Uh, when we plot the hard color uh, against the soft color or the hard color against the intensity, total intensity. And uh, if we consider the Z sources, so Z sources will stress a Z, uh, Z uh, later or on, on this diagram, like CC color color diagram or, and HID. So, uh, and the spectral difference between these two is like Z sources are uh, spectrally soft. And uh, uh, however, the uh, at all sources, the region which is like in, in the softer uh, uh, region will have a similar uh, spectral properties as the Z sources, but uh, it will be harder at this region, the upper region. So this is the difference. So they uh, using this uh, the, by calculating this diagram and properties timing studies, they established that it is that the XG twelve fifty four minus six ninety is a at all source. So uh, the another timing property studied by Mukherjee and Bhattacharya two thousand eleven, they gave uh, the the they, they they count this is again RXT observation 
from 2008 and they found candidate QPUs, candidate QPUs around like here at uh, 64.01 hertz and the uh, 48.63 hertz. But uh, they were not sure, like the physical, uh, the, the statistical significance was, was not so uh, that they, they will be, they will call it like a, a confirmed QQ. That's why they were calling it as a candidate QQs. Okay. So uh, with this all background, uh, we, we decided to study this source. Uh, we proposed the observation uh, because this, this source is like, uh, it shows a typical variation in deep depth. So we wanted to study this source. So um, we proposed the astrosat observation during AO4 cycle of astrosat. And uh, for this study, we used a uh, soft X-ray telescope and as, uh, for, as a primary instrument while observation and data from soft X-ray telescope and lax PC have been analyzed uh, during this uh, work. So the first thing, uh, this is the accessor observation which we have studied for this source. Uh, this is a long observation of about 40 kiloseconds. And uh, as we can see here, uh, this is the SHT light curve and lax PC. So for the spectral study, we only consider there are three units of lax PC, but for spectral study, we only consider lax PC 20. And uh, for a timing study, we have considered uh, lax PC 10 and 20 both. So the SXT light curve uh, uh, simultaneously plotted with the lax PC light curve in two different energy bands, the soft like four to six and another six to 20 keV. And uh, this is the hardness ratio of these two energy bands, uh, six to 20 divided by four to six. Uh, so the color codes, uh, I will explain why we have plotted such color color codes uh, in the uh, next uh, in, in some uh, next slide. So uh, what we observed that uh, uh, when we plotted the light curve, the source intensity was uh, uh, high initially high. Uh, it was it was showing flares during like in at the beginning of the observation and. Uh, these are the like this 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 is all flaring region, but this these two are the prominent flares which we observed during this uh, observation at the beginning, and then it went down the uh, flux the counted went down uh, uh, and it became uh, uh, soft and we we saw only two dips, so we we saw some flaring and followed by two dips. So this is dip one which is shallow dip as I explained, and this is uh, deep two, is a deep deep. And uh, uh, so for deeps, we don't have uh, simultaneous, like for deep deep, we don't have SXT data, but in uh, uh, for the shallow deep, we could see it in the uh, uh, SXT as well. So these players are prominent. Uh, they are like in a hard X-ray, so that the, hence they're indicating in the hardness intensity diagram also. So uh, these are the zoom in uh, plots for the dips. This is deep one, shallow and a uh, shallow dip, and this is deep two, uh, uh, deep dip. So uh, okay, so dip is a soft X-ray phenomena, so which is prominently seen in the four to six kV energy band. So we plotted here with one one uh, second time uh, time bin and same dip with the four second time bin, and here the uh, deep dip. With the same one and four second time beam. So uh, we observed that the reduction of uh, uh, flux or the photon count uh, or the count rate uh, during the shallow dip was like nine, uh, during the sh shallow dip was uh, 9.7% compared to the persistent emission. And uh, for the deep dip, it was 15.9% uh, compared to the uh, uh, compared to the uh, persistent emission in 4 to 20 kV band of the lax PC. So uh, light curve, if, if you can see that uh, the during the uh, deepest region of the dip, the hardness ratio is very high and rest of the time it is almost uh, stable. The shallow dips uh, depth and the hardness ratio are similar. Uh, we, we can see here, it is a similar to the uh, deep dip uh, because the, it, is, it, is, it is 
seen that it is observed that the shallow dips are nothing but the very short duration of the duration uh, duration of the uh, deep dip so that is why the uh, the hardness uh, uh, we see are almost similar in both cases so these are the uh, flares plotted in one second uh, time when uh, the prominent to prominent flares which we saw in the light curve uh, the flares are the hard X-ray phenomena. That is why we we see them. Uh, we can ob clearly observe them in six to twenty keV energy band. Uh, so uh, here are the flares we can see them. Okay. So here is the hardness intensity diagram for uh, our observation using same LAXPC twenty data. So uh, we divided six to twenty keV light curve with the four to six light curve. Uh, and plotted against the entire energy, 4 to 20 kV. Uh, we saw that the source, uh, as we discussed earlier, it is a tall source, and it, it gave this uh, uh, this kind of a pattern on HIT. So uh, it is moving so fast. Uh, so the track is well defined and it is in banana state we uh, by comparing it with the previous study we uh, uh, we observe that it was in banana state during this observation the intensity and the hardness so if we can observe so color codes now if we can observe are same as the region so this region we form based on the intensity so we divided uh, this region uh, the intensities which are like uh, 40 to uh, 65 uh, between 40 to 65 and then the 65 to 70 and so on and uh, uh, just we wanted to see the evolution to, uh, along this uh, uh, trajectory and um, if we can observe like the color codes are uh, uh, giving more idea about which region is belonging to the which part of the spectrum so if we can remember that the black dots these this black points are belonging to the uh, lowest intensity uh, observation uh, where the dips were also observed these are the uh, media, uh, the middle part of the light curve, and this where blue is where the uh, flaring was uh, observed. So if we when we study the uh, uh, evolution of these four sections, we understand that we are uh, comparing the flaring uh, with the uh, lower uh, flux uh, of the source. So for our study, we did not actually consider dips. We excluded dips while doing doing the spectral study. We but we kept the flaring part as it is, and this is the low persistent uh, region of the light curve. So this is the spectrum. Uh, uh, this is joint spectrum. This, this black is the SXP and uh, uh, red is the LAXPC. So uh, the joint SXP and LAXPC 20 spectral fitting uh, for the four section, each of the four, this is for the one first section, the black section. Uh, we perform it for the all four sections and we consider the energy from 0.7 to 20 kV by, uh, uh, by com uh, combining both, of, both SXP and LAXPC 20. And uh, we used actually two uh, models. Um, the first model, is the uh, which is we adopted from uh, Das Trigo et al. 2009, where they have uh, uh, studied the examin Newton data, and the second is more generic uh, to understand the uh, to understand the uh, source property during this observation. We considered uh, a more generic model, uh, which consists of a sim simple and disk paper. So, reason uh, we wanted to see the uh, reason to uh, uh, use model m1 uh, we wanted to actually uh, see the consistency between the two results which, uh, which the results which are uh, reported by uh, using examine newton data and the actual set uh, which we are studying now and uh, here are the results like uh, results from model m1 uh, we so what exactly happened happened is like uh, the, the it was very complex model and it was difficult to uh, keep all the parameters variable uh, like uh, uh, bomb maps and gaussian we kept the bomb maps and gaussian parameter consistent with the with those of the examine newton results and we wanted to observe the uh, variation in the disk uh, disk temperature 
uh, between two observations. And uh, what we found is like here, if we can see the uh, pink, uh, point, uh, pink data points are belonging to the examine Newton uh, observation from uh, Dash Trigger at all 2009. And uh, the blue ones are the astrocat observations, uh, which we studied now. Uh, the, what we observe is like uh, the it is consistent. The pattern is consistent uh, uh, between two observation between two results. The 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 we we see this we see this shift because as as I told during these observations the beginning at, at the beginning of the observation source was uh, very uh, like it was having very high intensity and the, uh, very. Uh, high clearing so that is why we see this shift between two uh, data sets and uh, we see this uh, evolution of the source and which is consistent with the uh, earlier reports uh, earlier results presented by the examine newton um, uh, examine newton uh, result uh, data so using model m2 uh, with uh, simple and disk db uh, we saw that the temperature, uh, disk DB temperature is increasing as we saw in model one as well. Uh, the, uh, it is increasing as the source is becoming harder. Uh, so this, all this for us, uh, so uh, each four points are belonging to the four sections of the HID. Uh, uh, I forgot to tell. Uh, so these are the uh, hard, uh, the source, as the source becomes harder, the, uh, the Temperature, disk temperature was increasing, uh, which is like indicating that the disk has come closer to the neutron star. And uh, whereas the inner disk radius uh, is decreasing, as in, which is again indicating that the, uh, the, the disk inner edge is also uh, approaching to the neutron star. However, we did not see much uh, variation in the photon or law index uh, of simple. Uh, it was Within uncertainty. Uh, for uh, power spectral uh, density, uh, we, we, we tried a uh, few uh, combinations, uh, but uh, so uh, we did not observe any uh, QPOs reported by um, Kurji and Bhattacharya at all 2011 at uh, 48 and uh, 65 hertz, uh, uh, hertz, hertz frequency. But uh, when we like when we consider entire observation, uh, this is uh, so the power uh, timing studies have been done using XPC ten and twenty both, uh, and uh, so we when we consider entire observation from three to twenty kV uh, 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 with, from the layer one of the LAXPC, uh, what we found is like uh, we found a, a low frequency at during at the low frequency. There is a QPO we found here uh, at 0.6 hertz, but uh, it wasn't having uh, a better significance. So it is just a two sigma. So we we don't want to call it like a con QPO, but if there is a QPO, but it is not having statistical significance to uh, say it. So and then we tried plotting the RMS energy relation where it is also uh, due to. Uh, large and uncertainty, uh, we don't see much like uh, prominent trend uh, in the RMS. So in timing study, we did not uh, see any, um, so in light curve also, we did not see any uh, thermonuclear burst and uh, the QPOs we, the, which is which are up reported earlier for this source, we could not see them. However, we see them in, uh, uh, see, we saw one at 0.65 hertz. Okay. So uh, here is the summary of my talk. Uh, the flux resolved spectroscopy we performed uh, with the astroset observation, which, which was done uh, in 2018 uh, May. Uh, and uh, with the two uh, instrument, using two instrument data, SFC and LAXPC. The hardness ratio uh, uh, throughout the observation was variable. And source was found to be uh, exhibiting flares uh, uh, at the beginning, and then uh, uh, we, we saw the two dips, the shallow dip and deep dip. 
the flaring phenomena is, uh, is dominated by the hard X-rays and hence we found the association with the hard X-ray ratio and the intensity uh, and uh, dips are related to the uh, Dips are related to the increased absorption of at the low energies. Uh, it is it is an anti-correlation between uh, hardness and the intensity of the source uh, of the observation during observation. Uh, the shallow dip is uh, is consistent of uh, what we observe is like what the shallow dip is consistent of few rapid deep variations. Uh, so and uh, in the one second light curve. Uh, what we then see that the source went, the source is in, in a banana branch, the source uh, uh, became brighter and went up, which indicates that the disk is clearly uh, come, came close to the neutron star and hence the inner, is, inner uh, in, disk inner edge temperature is increasing. But uh, however, uh, the corona perhaps like uh, not, did not change much. Uh, this is what we understand. And uh, considering the M model M2, the motion of the source in the banana branch could be interpreted uh, interpreted due to the inner edge location of the disk. Uh, as the decretion, uh, as the accretion rate increases, the disk uh, getting closer to the closer to the neutron star, and uh, of course that is causing the uh, increase in the uh, temperature of the um, disk. So. Uh, this is what we have studied, and uh, uh, these are my collaborators. Oh, I'm sorry. So these are my uh, collaborators for this work, and uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, Nilam, thanks a lot uh, for this very nice research. Uh, is there any question from audience? We are happy to take. Ee, Şölen hocam buyurun. Okay, I'm unmuted, uh, but uh, let me start my video as well. I don't know if you, I'm seen or not. I can't see the uh, uh, audience myself here, uh, but then um, we see anyway. you and we hear you well. Okay, okay, that's good. Okay, uh, so uh, um. The, the, there are a few things I want to say about your your work, and uh, the, the reason is uh, the 1254 minus 69 uh, is a dipper uh, it, dipper that I also studied, and um, and actually the paper you quoted, the Maria's paper, two, 2009 paper, uh, I'm a co-author of that paper, oh, okay. and yeah, I'm a co-author of that paper, and. And that paper does not have only XMM data, it has also integral data. It's a sort of a wide band analysis. And I, I am the owner of the um, integral data actually. Okay. And and um, in general, um, I, I've, I've appreciated what you've done, but I've a little bit uh, got um, uh, sort of discouraged that um, uh, I thought perhaps AstroSat would have been uh, could have made better, but then uh, I, as I see, there's not enough sensitivity in the lower X-rays, so that you cannot work like XMM. Yeah, and, and XMM does superb job with with the warm absorbers, and and, yeah. and it's in, it's uh, unprecedented. And uh, <clears throat> as I see. Um, You've tried a pretty, uh, you know, closely tried to follow that, and um, uh, but I I haven't seen if you've um, uh, were able to drive any warm absorber parameters. But I think you actually fixed the warm absorber parameters, right? Yes. yes. So you, you had did, to fix them, okay. Yeah. You did not. Okay. So, but the problem is the warm absorber parameters. I don't know how well you've been able to actually, did the, in, in that word, I checked the paper, it's been 11 years, so it's a long time ago paper. Mm -hmm. And um, apparently we haven't uh, be, uh, been able to decompose very contrasting values for the warm absorber in, in 1254. Uh, mm -hmm. But then um, uh, in, in general, um, 
uh, perhaps I don't know, but um, it, I, I'm actually commenting. I'm not asking you questions. I I kind of felt mm -hmm. like uh, ah, this is like an old friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Twelve fifty four, <laughs> and uh, yeah. and so um, but in general, um, in in the way um, you've uh, perhaps um, should quote that and more clearly that all these sources differs are can be represented by warm absorbers at all times including okay. persistent emission and uh -huh. any level of dipping okay, okay. and yeah. and the eclipses even uh are are it's, it's unclear sometimes it's like a total eclipse real ec physical eclipse yeah. well you can tell that from the optical actually for, okay. for any dipper uh but then in, in general, for 12, 12 uh, 54 is not exactly an eclipser. So uh, therefore, it's it different at all times. And, and therefore, uh, there is a level of dipping and then a warm absorber uh, uh, that causes those dippings um, mm -hmm. in, 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 the, in the sense that um, uh, it causes those dippings and therefore, um, so did you see more or absorbing? So there is the, the disc uh, itself is patchy. Therefore, it, uh, there is material on it. And it's mm -hmm. not per perhaps uh, distributed evenly even. But, but as you say, it's true that it's loaded at the impact point. Yeah. Okay, so that's where the most of the materials, but it's spread over. Yeah. And um, so, um, in, in general, maybe it's better to perhaps explain these in this in terms of um, a model like uh, the model better in that respect, the, uh, the model in Maria's paper. Um, yes. and in generally, uh, you, you, deeper models, uh, you can. There, there are competing models. I don't know. I, 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 I'm not doing deepers any longer, but um, uh, that there were other. Uh, uh, sort of uh, rival, not rivaling, but um, uh, competing models where they don't yeah. use warm absorbers, but they use cold absorbers and other uh -huh. It was simplex is probably one of those. I'm I, I'm not familiar with simplex so much. And um, in generally, I I I appreciated your work, and uh, but I hope it would have been a little better. It would have been a bit better in the sense of describing the warm absorbers, but you're getting consistent results, yes, as I yes, see, yes. Uh, with, with, with a, a broad band of um, uh, the um, broadband. Um, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, um, I wondered, did, did, did you have anything with the UV, UV IT? The, no, no. For this observation, no. we did not configure UVIT, so okay. uh, we don't so you, have you, do, you don't have that. I'm, yeah. I'm actually still a bit surprised in the sense that so so it's it is um um so see we had the same thing in the integral data. Now yeah. um, I'm, I've analyzed actually I have a sort of a four, four object um, integral uh, analysis GEMX act is the analysis of. Uh, uh, of um, some four of those dippers, uh, and it's di very difficult to actually with, with the lower and and more low low resolution spectral resolution and low sensitivity uh, data. It's very difficult to study observers, but you can check my paper as well on integral sure. data. Uh, I, I'm the uh, I'm I'm Balman, so you know my last name probably. I, I'm not seeing anything. That's why I'm trying to tell you. So yes, yes. and and I'm. Um, in that respect, um, uh, I, it would have been interesting because in the uh, in the very hard X-rays, it's difficult. I didn't. I, I never re recovered the deeper dippings in the is 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 properly. But isgri is very hard X-rays, you know. But Gemex revealed the dipping uh, activity. So mm -hmm. I, I was. I wondered. Have you seen? Um, um, like, uh, but, but you, you've seen episodes in the sense where you, you, as I see, you actually weren't able to decompose the deep, deep dips. Yeah. Uh, b because you haven't seen it. You don't, you, you can't see properly. I was, yeah. because we were e e able to, we, we had 
simultaneous XMM and um, integral data. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually wrote that proposal, and uh, and we had the simultaneity uh, with the XMM at some point for one um, data taken at a certain date, okay. and and we can actually see the dipping activity and, and the, what's it's what it's actually doing in the very hard X-rays. Yeah. So yeah. You, you, it, because it depends largely on. Um, uh, it depends largely on absorption, so you're not able to see it. But there is also this context that warm absorbers um, should scatter data. Okay, mm -hmm. so therefore uh, there there was some expectation that there will be scattering dips, yeah. not absorption dips, but it will be scattered away from the line of sight. So there yeah. should feel some dipping effects. I never saw that, but maybe you could have seen something like that. So keep that in mind. Sure, sure, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Keep that in mind. So there, there were uh, notions that suggested that, that 30 pence per cent can be lost from the scattering okay. rather than absorption because of the warm absorber. Okay. So uh, just think about that. And um, sure, sure. But, but if you don't, this was just a suggestion, it may not be true. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen it in the uh, integral data. So mm -hmm. so that was that's something you can try to see if, if that actually okay. sort of exists. Yeah. Because um, warm absorber media would be doing absorption, definitely, mm -hmm. but also scattering to, to some extent. And that could be available in the very hard x-rays. You don't see it, but you should still see the scattering out yeah. of sight. Okay. Um, but it could be because of the way uh, scattering works, it could it could be that it's preferentially scattered in the forward direction. Therefore, mm -hmm. we really may not we may not be seeing the scattering so well either. But you, okay. that's something you can look into. Um, yeah. uh, and do I have any other? I talked so much, so <laughs> I don't. But I, I I appreciated your work, and I, it was good to see how. Um, how these things worked out, but I, I, I would have appreciated seeing a bit more on the dipper, mm -hmm. dipping yes. activity yes. Uh, with, with Astrosat, but apparently- Yeah, we were hoping yeah, the same, yeah. It's, uh, it, it is not seen, but um, you can try the better dippers. Yeah. Uh, 1254 yeah. Is, is sometimes it's referred to, to have a, a very hot accretion this corona. Mm. That's why we use the Compte T model to fit the harder component, okay. continuum component. So, yeah. so that that could also be effective in uh, so not producing or washing away the effects of the absorber, yeah. um, but then uh, uh, scattered in the disc or towards the outer disc. But it's unclear. I, I had another work at some point on the dippers where I. So I found that the the absorber not were not just at the edges of the disc, but spread on the disc in the middle. You can find yeah. it even towards the middle yeah. of the disc and so forth. And um, so let me think what else I can suggest you if I have anything that I could from 10 years ago, I have to remember all these. Yeah. And uh, so oh, I guess I talked so much. So thanks a lot. And I, I, I like your talk and uh, good luck with dippers. You yes. should try a lot of other dippers. I, I, I gather those other dippers must have been analyzed. And this is only yes. 1254. But I think that there are others that you can do pretty well. Sure, sure, definitely. Uh, yes. Better than 1254. Yes. yes. There are better dippers. Yeah. showing more extensive dipping activity. Dipping activity, yeah. yeah. Okay. You should yeah. try those and see how the warm absorber is also working out. It, it yeah. would have been, uh, well, yes, nice. So if one of the dippers, the dipping parts, try to leave the absorbing media parameters, absorber parameters free and see what you get freely. Um, and, and does that um, help with? Um, to also, look at my uh, my paper is also a 2009 paper, and sure. it's all the integral data my, with my last name. Yes, and yes. Um, uh, you can you can have it. You have you can have a look, and that might be more relevant to what you do it trying to do since it's uh, harder X-rays and yeah. lower sensitivity and so forth. Yes. You can you can you can have a look. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you. And I, I'm just yeah. going away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bye, bye. Yeah. Bye. Thanks a lot for the contribution. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Nilam, we thank you again for the talk and also yeah. uh, Sharajan for the next talk. And uh, <laughs> <laughs>
Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, see you on our next meeting. It will be on this Thursday. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you Bye. so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Nilan. Bye. 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 Thank you, Nilan. Bye. Bye. Thank you.